what a day. This has been four years in the making. Four years ago, the South Carolina Battleground Trust approached the granddaddy of battleground preservation, the American Battlefield Trust, and the conversation started about the Liberty Trail. I can tell you for each of us involved in this, this doesn't even come close to resembling a job. This is an honor to do what we do and a privilege to do it. So I want to thank you all for coming. We've got an exciting and short program. <laughs> and we'll adjourn to the reception right over here to the side. It's my great pleasure to introduce our first speaker. The governor and I met each other in 1974. Regretfully, that long ago, I was already in college, and the governor was an alumnus advisor for the national fraternity to which I belonged. We've stayed in touch and had a great friendship through all these decades, and I am very proud to introduce my and all of our good friend, Governor Henry McMaster. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It has been a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all be seated, please. Y'all probably heard the, the, the joke. As they say, Elizabeth Taylor, the great actress, said to her sixth husband, I won't keep you long. <laughs> well, I won't. This is a, this it really is a privilege and an honor, Master, so much so that I even brought my own red coat with me. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> those are real swords those men had a minute ago, by the way. Y'all, this is a great thing. I, I'm convinced that the strength of our state, we, we are strong because we remember, and we remember things because we are strong. And it's because of the strength of our people that the business leaders from around the world and around the country invest in hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. They're all coming to the southeast now, it seems. And many of them are coming to South Carolina, more than our share. And they, I've asked them why, why that is. And they say, well, the great research universities with which they can collaborate and communicate, the fantastic technical college system, which is the best in the, in the whole world, because of the rivers and the mountains, because of our low union participation, which is unnecessary generally in, in our state completely, and also the great port of Charleston with two inland ports, no other state has that. All these things, and, but they say that the main reasons are three, the people, the people, the people. And they say the people of South Carolina are strong, resilient, they'll persevere, and if they give you their word, they keep it. They say that's unlike most other places that they go to. They say that, that we're unique. And in trying to figure out how that happened, reading Walter Edgar's books and Dan Hollis's books and others trying to go back into the, in Ms. Sims in the history of South Carolina, it seems that the, they, they agree that there are two big currents that have converged in our state. And one is the military tradition and the other is the Judeo-Christian tradition. Both are strong, and uh, the Citadel, which this was a part of, the Arsenal Academy was the sister institution to the Citadel, both created in 1842. The militias were housed here and there and taught uh, for, for a number of years. But that military tradition is one that is very strong, and so is the Judeo-Christian. When you take those two traditions and put them on top of paradise, that is a place <laughs> where the Spanish, the French, and the English all said was the most productive, most beautiful, most bountiful place in the new world. When they were telling that to their sovereigns, then you end up with some real strong people. And we've been up, we've been down. Uh, as uh, Muhammad Ali, the great fighter, said when a, a young fella said to him, said, Champ, didn't you get knocked down by George Foreman or was it uh, Joe Frazier in the fight? He said, son, I've never been knocked down. I'm either up or getting up. <laughs> and we are up now. And it's for us to be sure that we stay up and we keep going up. I'm convinced, if you look back at what we call the greatest generation, those men and their, their families were at home and they were in that, in that great war and they came back with an understanding of what is real, what is truth, and what's important. 
And that's why we hear so much about them and their, their quiet strength as well as their great accomplishments. Well, we've gotten away from that a little bit. Now we have a, a volunteer army. Now we, and it was mostly volunteers then. It was not mostly draftees, but in any event, we've gotten away from that where soldiers and airmen, Marines, don't serve short periods. Now it's mainly a career thing. So that, that understanding of that kind of life is not something that is common to the people as, it, as much as it used to be. And as a result of that, I think we're, we're losing a little bit of our understanding of what it took to make this state and this country so strong. So that is why this effort is so important. By emphasizing, by explaining, by teaching what has happened here, why it happened, what was involved, the sacrifices, the determination, all of that was involved. When the people understand that, that gives them strength for the future. It makes them better citizens. It makes them better parents. It'll make this a better state, and it'll make this a better country. And I believe because of our state's magnificent role in the revolution, as well as other things where, that we've major accomplishments we've had here, most of which are, are untold, I believe that our state can be a leader in this education, in this unification in this strengthening of our country. And so I applaud those who are involved in this. I thank all of you and congratulations for being here. And as they say, the best is yet to come. And we're doing part of it right now, right here. Thank you very much. Next on our agenda is uh, Jim Lighthizer, president of the American Battlefield Trust um, I've had the opportunity to work closely with Jim and his excellent staff. Um, if you've not met them, there are a number of them here today, and these are world-class preservationists. And you'll realize that as you hear Jim's remarks today. My good friend, Jim Lighthizer. Thank you, Doug, for that very nice introduction. I have to give a few introductions myself, particularly since they're members of my board of trustees, and I hope you all understand that. But before I do anything, Governor, I'd like to compliment you uh, not only on your great remarks, but uh, to say this to the folks out there, I I'm a recovering politician. He he's, still, uh, he's still active, but, uh, and from Maryland, and I've known a lot of governors in my life, uh, but I've never met one that, that knew as much and cared as much about American history as, as Governor McMaster. And Governor, I commend you for that, sir, that this state is well served. And uh, Madam First Lady, let me introduce, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce a couple of my trustees, which uh, pay my salary, so. Uh, First, I'm going to introduce uh, somebody that you may have heard of, Coach Vince Dooley. Coach Dooley, he said, give him a round of applause. He, he brought with him his lovely wife, Barbara, and she asked me to tell you she damned upset about what happened a couple of weeks ago <laughs> down in Georgia. And if you all stop by afterwards, you'll give you a piece of her mind, by golly. And don't ever let it happen again, right? <laughs> and the other trustee of the American Battlefield Trust is here today is Charlie Tresker, who's from South Carolina and North Carolina. Charlie, thank you. There, there is one person, I don't know if he's here, I didn't see him. He's a young man. His name is uh, John McGovey. Is he here? Is he? John, raise your hand, okay? John, is see him back there. Now, before you applaud, let me tell you why I mentioned him. John, we have something called a le le youth leadership team. We just started it a couple, not too, a few months ago. And we picked 10 outstanding young people in high school from around the country, and they're from every part of the United States. And we, we train them up on, on the, the values of the American Battlefield Trust and what the battle, American Battlefield Trust does and why it's important. We let them get involved in things like lobbying, and the idea is they'll go back and spread the gospel. In other words, we teach them the gospel, then they go back and spread the gospels. And John is uh, from is it Rock Hill, South Carolina? 
uh, he, he's, so he's, he's the South Carolina representative. We don't have, as I said, there's 10, so there's not 50, but he's, he's from this part of the country, and John, I'm glad you could make it as well, and stands, thanks for being part of the program. I am blessed to be president of the American Battlefield Trust, and I cannot tell you how excited I am about today, because today we're, we're kind of announcing, if you will, the rollout of something called the Liberty Trail. Now, the American Battlefield Trust, which some of you, probably most of you may never have heard of, is probably the, well, it is, it's the best American heritage land preservation group you never heard of. Uh, but we, we basically do two things. We build parks and we tell stories. And the parks we build are the places, the battlefields, where America was created and defined. The Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, and of course the American Civil War. And we're here today to talk about the American Revolutionary War, where America was created. We have as our motto, preserve, educate, and inspire. By preserve, of course, it saved that land, that battlefield land where this country was created. Educate speaks for itself. Tell people about that land, interpret that land, and tell people why it matters today, not just in past history. And finally, God willing, get them inspired so they'll get more into their history, but more than anything else, become better citizens. And we have some tremendous partners with us, starting with the state of North Carolina, thanks to Governor McMaster. But we also have some other wonderful partners, the South Carolina Battleground Trust, the National Park Service, Dan Smith's up here, uh, a whole bunch of people from the private sector, and I'm undoubtedly even the counties, places like Kershaw County, Berkeley County, and others. We are coming together and what we want to create is a, a history experience, a trail that tells the story of where the American Revolutionary War was really won. And folks, some of you may know that, but 99% of America doesn't know that. We're going to tell a story that nobody knows, and that's where this war was really won, and it's in South Carolina. And the way we give yourself a round of applause and then tell somebody. I probably shouldn't say this, but I will. Uh, I was telling the governor, I think, I said, you know, I'm from Ohio originally. I said, the damn Yankees stole the Revolutionary War from you. They're after, everybody thinks it was in Boston. Heck, I thought it was in Boston. They fought a little engagement at Saratoga, and then they kind of hung around for four or five years, went down to Yorktown and quit. Until I started reading about the history, the real history. And the real history says that the war was won in South Carolina. And as I said, it's a story nobody knows. And what we propose to do with our great partners is do something that we've never done before, and that is create a world-class, first-class, inspiring out series of outdoor classrooms that tells that story. And the way we're going to do it is first save the land, preserve. We've already saved over 600 acres of, of South Carolina Revolutionary War battlefield land, and in the first phase, we got another 400 to go. We're going to combine five new battlefields that we're creating and paying for, interpret them. We're going to interpret a few other battlefields that are not adequately interpreted now but are saved, and we're going to partner them or link them up with three National Park Service sites, anchors, if you will, Cowpens, 96, Kings Mountain. And the first phase of this story, which is going to be 16 battlefields and 14 pull-offs, sites where there have been developed, you can't save any ground, but something important happened there. Those total of 30 sites, and they're going to be the first phase of the Liberty Trail. Well, the Liberty Trail will eventually extend to 70 sites, 400 miles in total, from the coast of South Carolina all the way to the back country. And they're going to tell a story, as I keep saying, that nobody really knows. But it's not just saving the land. We have to interpret the land. And the, and the American Battlefield Trust has done th those two elements before. We've saved over 52,000 acres in 24 states and 145 battlefields. We know how to do that. And we know how to interpret. And we're getting good at interpretation or in technology, I should say. And the thing, folks, to remember that, in my mind, what's going to make this ordinary trail or good trail, a great trail, is technology. What's going to tie it all together, what's going to become the force multiplier is going to be technology. And we are committed 
to having state-of-the-art technology applied to this. And let me tell you quickly what I mean. Two parts. One is a website. You'll be able to get on that website, and let's say you're in Dundalk, Maryland, and you want to go to Disney World, but you got a couple days to spend on the way down. You can get on that website, tell them how many days you got, and the website will give you an itinerary in South Carolina to learn something about your country and something about your heritage. And if you happen to be a business person in Charlotte and some, some things, were, uh, the afternoon of appointments were canceled, you can get on and say, I got six hours, where do I go? And it'll take you down to Cowpens and Kings Mountain and places like Waxhaw and places, other places like that so that you can get an experience. The second part of it is an app. An app is a, a, a GPS-specific uh, instrument that you can download onto your iPhone. You can, of course, run it through Bluetooth in your car if you choose to. But it takes you, it puts that battlefield in your palm of your hand. And that app's not only going to give you directions on how to get to a specific battlefield, it's going to talk to you some history while you're going there, tell you about pull-offs if there are any, and then give you a battlefield tour when you get there. And it'll be in-depth and be able to drill down even to biographies of the key people. And when you're done with that, it'll tell you how to get to the next one and tell you some history while you're going. It's going to be the most advanced application of its kind that's ever been developed. And that is the force multiplier, as I say, that is going to turn this into a great park. And we're going to have metrics, folks. This isn't some big dream, we'll build it and walk away. We've got to have metrics so we can measure who's going where and how much time they're spending and what are they looking at so that we can constantly improve it. We're here for the long haul to make this, as I said, a premier experience. In the end, in partnership with the 250 Commission, both statewide and national, I'll tell you what we're going to have. We're going to have an outdoor classroom that is going to do two things. It's going to teach people their history, history they didn't know, history that happened in South Carolina but is national history, and we're going to make them better citizens. And in the end, that's what it's all about. Thank you. I'm sorry. This is embarrassing. Yeah. No. No, you're not invited. Look, we've run you off before. Don't make us do it again. Goodbye. I'm sorry. Well, Lord Cornwallis, he keeps calling. I, I'm sick of this guy. Um... Next on our agenda is a, a great public servant um, from Camden who represents uh, Kershaw County, Lancaster County, Chesterfield. Chesterfield County, a lot of counties, a lot of job to do, but has been a good friend of this whole effort from the start, has been intimately involved with this whole project. What choice does he have? His wife is the chairperson of the board for Historic Camden Foundation, so he obviously knows where his bread is buttered. But let me introduce you to Senator Vincent Shaheen. Thank you, Doug, and thank you all for being here. Governor and Madam First Lady, thank you for your support in this endeavor, your efforts, opening up the grounds to us and knowing what is so important to our state of South Carolina. It's exciting to be here. This is the culmination of years of work and planning on the part of dozens, scores, and hundreds of people, and I'm glad to play one small, small role in it. Uh, Jim, it's good to hear you admit it. This is the way I think about it. The Revolutionary War may have started in Boston, in Massachusetts. It may have ended in Virginia, but ladies and gentlemen, it was surely won right here in South Carolina, and that's something to be proud about. And so today we really are celebrating, celebrating, celebrating our history, a renewal of our commitment to the values and the history that we know, but we're also launching we are also launching works that will last beyond our lifetimes. We are here to celebrate the Liberty Trail and the work 
of the friends who have brought it to us. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but we are very thankful. We're here to launch and celebrate the South Carolina Sester Centennial. That just means Revolutionary War 250 Commission and its start. And we are here to celebrate things that are happening throughout South Carolina uh, on the ground. General Nathaniel Green stated uh, about the Revolutionary War in the South and about South Carolina that we fight, we get beat, we rise and fight again. And I feel like it. I feel like it. <laughs> Governor, I feel like that's what we've been doing on this effort, but we are winning the fight to tell the story of what happened in South Carolina. Uh, like our forebears, we're not afraid to fight in this state, but we have a state and a nation that doesn't really remember where it came from or what happened, especially here in the South. And we have allowed, we have been the ones who have been guilty of allowing that story to be forgotten and not be told. I want to especially talk today very briefly about some wins that we have right now. I'm proud to have drafted uh, and passed along with my friends. I know Senator Hutto is here uh, and Representative uh, Lori Slade Funderburk and others. Proud to have drafted and passed the legislation establishing the Rev War 250 Commission, the, one of the first in America to do that, in the state of South Carolina right here. That is a win, ladies and gentlemen, in the state of South Carolina. I want to thank Julian Burns for giving me the idea to do it. Thank you for the vision, Julian Burns. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, think about it. Right here today, we've got Democrats, Republicans, we've got people from all over the state of South Carolina, black and white, uh, rich and poor, everywhere. And that is what the history of America teaches. It's why we're great, Governor. It is why we are great in the state of South Carolina. I want to thank uh, PRT and the Governor for supporting the Sester Centennial Commission, the Governor for signing it and being an, an important support of that, uh, lending the support of PRT, Dwayne Parrish, uh, I know that Dr. Emerson from Archives is here somewhere. Thank you, Dr. Emerson, for your work. What a great win. What a great win. Win number two. I am proud to work with our partners at the American Battleground Trust and the South Carolina Battleground Trust, and I want all of you to stand up. Employees, staff, leaders, please stand up. Let's give these folks a round of applause, please. They are committed to the state of South Carolina. Jim, Doug, stand up. What they have done for us in promoting and putting their money where their mouth is on the South Carolina, South Carolina Liberty Trail is amazing. I want to thank the board members, especially Doug Bostic and Jim Lighthizer, who've done yeoman service. Uh, and let me just brag, locally, with their help, uh, they have taken down another 300 acres of the Battle of Camden site, one of the most historically significant sites in the American Revolution donated it to the Historic Camden Foundation, and they are doing that in Camden. They're doing it in Lancaster, Steve Willis, at the Battle of Hanging Rock. It's a lot to brag about, and we're thankful for your work. Um, on, an, on another win on the local level, uh, I am proud to announce, Governor, we've talked about this, a partnership, a true partnership between the city of Camden, the county of Kershaw, Central Carolina, the state of South Carolina, and many other partners to announce the construction, which has just begun, on the Revolutionary War Visitor Center at Camden. This is a $5 million state-of-the-art facility. It will explain the backcountry Revolutionary War story in the South, in our state, and locally. It will display artifacts, it will tell stories, it will have narratives and exhibits. Governor, if someone in America or across the world wants to learn how the Revolutionary War was fought in the back country of the South, the place to go will be Camden, South Carolina. And I am proud of that. I am proud of that. I want to give special thanks to Mayor Alfred May Drakeford. I know some of her council is here. Mel Pearson, who has played a critical role. Uh, Julian Burns, uh, Vic Carpenter, Dr. Michael Makota from Central Carolina. This is a team effort between the locals and the state of South Carolina, and our folks at the Trust. I'm excited, and I invite you all to the ribbon cutting, which Mel will be next summer, right? I'm holding to the timeline. 
Let me, there's a lot going on, so let me just keep bragging. Number four win, the American Battleground Trust and the South Carolina Battleground Trust, working closely with Kershaw County and our special friend Phil Gaines, who was a PRT director for a long time, are developing a comprehensive master plan for developing the Battle of Camden site, uh, which will be incredible when it's completed, and we'll see tourists all from across the country and internationally. Special thanks to Charles Baxley, who is out there somewhere. Well, he is behind me, Charles Baxley. Thank you. Um, Doug, David Ruer, uh, and many, many others who have, have made that something real. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just say wow, and on a personal level, as a kid who grew up in one of the most historic towns, not just in South Carolina, but in America, I grew up truthfully in ignorance about our story because we don't tell our story. Think of it. Where I grew up, this little piece of land in South Carolina, people like Andrew Jackson walked the streets, were in prison, coach. Think about it. Thomas Sumter, Baron DeKalb, Francis Marion walked those grounds. It is a story worth telling. It is a story worth celebrating, and I can't wait to bring people from across the nation and across the world to experience what we know is so real. Thank each and every one of you for the part you're playing. We're going to make it all happen. Well, there are lots and lots of partners in this effort. That's reflected in your program, all the many organizations, counties, towns, trusts, foundations, people that are working on this effort. And the truth is, we wouldn't be here today if it were not for each of you. And so we owe you a debt of gratitude along with the many organizations that are working with us. One of the organizations we're proud to have in South Carolina, and it's an important state organization, is the South Carolina Conservation Bank. They have a new executive director, Raleigh West, who came most recently from the Lord Berkeley Conservation Trust. I can tell you from watching him in action, he has turned the Conservation Bank on its ear and has this thing already whipped into a well-oiled machine and a major asset to the preservation of important land, and not just important land, but the culture of South Carolina. Please join me in welcoming Raleigh West. Thank you, Doug. Um, and Governor, Madam First Lady, thank you for having me, and members of the General Assembly and other guests. I'm so honored to be here. Uh, as Doug said, my name is Raleigh West. I'm the new director for the Conservation Bank, and I've been on the job for uh, about three months now, so still pretty new at it. But what a blessing it's been. I've had the opportunity to travel to all corners of the state, and I'm continually struck by how beautiful the landscape of South Carolina is. Where else can you, you know, catch a trout in the mountains in, in the morning and be four hours later? on the coast catching a redfish. It's, uh, it's really a remarkable state. It's also one that has been stated um, up here is, is, is tremendously rich in history. Much of that history is well documented, but much of it is underrepresented. And I think that the Revolutionary War falls into that latter category. Um, at, folks, at, at the bottom of the, of the mission of the South Carolina Conservation Bank is the notion that these beautiful South Carolina landscapes and the history and the quality of life that these create, that those ought to survive as our state continues to grow economically and in population. The Liberty Trail, in my view, fits squarely within the mission of the Conservation Bank for, for two reasons. Uh, first, the Conservation Bank has a broad mandate. We have to protect not just history, but wildlife habitat, wetlands, historic sites, public access, and so forth. These sites, like Camden, for instance, represents the convergence of all those conservation values. Uh, I mean, Senator Shaheen, I think you would agree that not only does it protect a, a wonderful historic site, 
but it also protects one of the finest longleaf pine habitats in that area. It pr provides tremendous wildlife habitat and uh, is a wonderful community resource. Secondly, what the Liberty Trail represents to me is partnerships. We have um, you know, relatively limited resources that we have to spread all over all this, um, the state, and we're looking to, to leverage that, that, those funds uh, through partnerships. And uh, Jim, I'm, I'm honored in, uh, that, that your group is willing to invest in South Carolina, because really, that's really what this represents, is an investment. And because of, of that, we're going to be able to stretch our dollars and do more good work. Uh, in closing, I thought I'd, I'd end with this sort of personal reflection. I was born on, in, in Monk's Corner on the Cooper River. And Jim, you and I were talking about this earlier. That's a new hub for the Liberty Trail. It's got Revolutionary War sites um, littered all over it. And uh, I was a fan of history. In fact, I majored in history. And I had no idea that these sites were in my backyard until I met Doug Bostick in my 30s and tried to start saving them. I had no idea that there was an intact British fort literally two miles from where I grew up called Fort Fairlawn, which the bank and the Battlefield uh, Trust helped save. I had no idea that the uh, Battle of Utah Springs was such a pivotal turning point in the war, and it's a few miles up the road. And uh, I'm, I'm just... I, I'm struck with the idea that if I didn't know about someone who's educated in history and has it, these sites in his backyard, well, then what does that say about the general uh, recognition of, of the historical significance of these? Folks, the Liberty Trail is going to fix that. And I'm honored to be a part of it. And uh, I know my bank board is as well. So thank you. Raleigh mentioned the Battle of Utah Springs. Um, amongst the many units that fought there on the Patriot side was the Maryland Continental Line. And uh, Jim, these are your people. When the Marylanders went home, they started naming everything in downtown Baltimore after places or officers at Utah Springs. So if today, or when the baseball season was up and running, if you would go to an Orioles game, now I don't know why you'd go to an Orioles game, <laughs> but if you did, you have to walk down Utah Street to see the Baltimore Orioles play. And that's, they don't have any idea. There's a street vendor there that sells a shirt that's emblazoned victory at Utah. And he and I think it means two entirely different things. Um, Next on the agenda is uh, Dan Smith with the National Park Service. Dan has most recently served as the interim director nationally for the Park Service. He is going to lead the 250th anniversary effort for the Park Service in our nation. And fittingly, he's a Carolinian. Now, he's from North Carolina, but be nice to him. But we're excited to have Dan in his new role and thrilled that he would honor us by coming today. Dan? Governor and First Lady, it's my privilege and honor to be with you today. As my first official duty as the new, newly named Senior Advisor to the Director of the National Park Service for all things encompassing the 250th anniversary of our Declaration of Independence. I will, in that role, I'll be dealing with things in the 13 colonies. I'll be dealing with things across the country because we're going to tell the story up until including to today of this country's growth. But uh, there'll be a little bit of inside track for the Southern campaign. <laughs> Out of my 43 years of federal service, 10 of those were spent as the superintendent of Colonial National Historic Park in Virginia, where the final major battle of the Rev War was fought and where Lord Cornwallis surrendered to uh, somebody you know in South Carolina, General Benjamin Lincoln. Uh, so that and the fact that I am a North Carolinian, I do know the, the history of what happened in the Southern Campaign. I do know that that story has not been told. And I did sneak down for a little reconnaissance in August when I was still the acting director of the Park Service, visited all these sites, spent the better part of a half a day in Camden, 
got to use Star Springs, got to the Walks Haws. Uh, the, the, I guess history says that counting every skirmish and some of those involving families, one side Tory, one side uh, Patriot, uh, history shows there were probably 200 engagements of some sort in South Carolina. Uh, that history has not been told at all. And in the next months and years, we will work with you as the Park Service to try to make sure that at the sites we have in South Carolina that that story is enhanced and told, that we do, working with Jim Lighthizer and the American Battlefield Trust, work to secure land that tells the Revolutionary War story here in the state, and to coordinate with your state commission and the federal commission to make sure that six years out, we really have told the story that needs to be told here in South Carolina. I hope everyone in this room knows John Slaughter, our superintendent, uh, who coordinates all things uh, in South Carolina. John, stand up for a second. If you don't know John, you need to get to know him. John will be my key person that I will coordinate with all South Carolina events. I'll come down from North Carolina when it's necessary, but when I'm not able to, John will very ably, as he has for years, represent us here in South Carolina. This Liberty tr Trail idea is going to be a success because it's a bottom-up organization that you've created. It has all the pieces that at the national level of the Park Service that we need to have. You have people who are willing to volunteer. You have people who are willing to fund from foundations. And you have involvement where necessary with state and federal uh, entities that can help with grant money and that type of thing. So on a rainy day in Columbia, South Carolina, uh, I wish all of you in your effort Godspeed, and I will be back in the not too distant future as we see this all roll out to success. Thank you very much. About a year and a half ago, I was researching in the archives in Charleston, as I'm prone to do, and this fellow walked up and he started asking me questions about something he was researching. And it became clear to me in a few minutes that he, wasn't, he didn't know he was talking to me. And I said, sir, I'm, I'm afraid you need to speak to Charles Baxley. And he said, well, you're Charles Baxley. I said, no, if I was, I think I would know that. And the first clue is Charles Baxley is not nearly as good looking as I am. <laughs> Charles is one of the great researchers on the Revolutionary War in our state. You know, I'm smarter than Charles. Charles went to law school, became a practicing attorney, and is dying to be an historian. He is an historian. I quit, I shortcutted all that and just went straight to history. But the governor, in his wisdom, nominated what, in my opinion, is the best person for the job to chair our 250th commission, my good friend and the man that I admire so much, Charles Baxley. Thank y'all so much. Whoever arranged the program was very brave because they gave a lawyer the last speech slot. <laughs> that is awful, isn't it? Thank all of my friends for coming here today. You're all invited here because of the extremely important role that you have played in the past and that I know you will play in the future in finding the lost Revolutionary War sites and helping obtain them to preserve them and helping correctly interpret them, and finally telling the story to almost everybody that will listen, and then some. Now, Doug instructed me to keep it to five minutes, which is hard for me to do. And secondly, I must introduce the members of the new 250th Anniversary Commission. So would the commissioners please stand up? We have Bill Davies, Emily DeQuincy Newman, Diane Culbertson, Lori Slade Funderburk, um, 
um, Steve Moss, um, Pam Kozo, and Representative Neil Collins, and there's several others of us that could not be here this afternoon. These ladies and gentlemen have taken on an arduous task. I thought it was really gonna be easy because I'm looking out on the audience that in my mind said, I've gotta to talk to these folks about the wonderful stories of all of the people in the American Revolution in, in South Carolina and in, the, and in the South. And I was patting myself on the back and say, this is easy. And my lovely wife who is here today to, to hear this said, no, Charles, no. You've got to learn how to tell it to millennials. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How you do that? Well, not easy, but thankfully, the wisdom of the General Assembly put some fine people on this commission, mainly in the person of Dwayne Parrish, the director of South Carolina's Parks and Recreation and Tourism. What a fine gentleman he is. He and Eric Emerson at, P at Archives and History have helped out so much, but Duane has a staff of folks who know how to speak millennial. Not easy. All we've got to do is get a cell phone, write a, an, a very uh, great app that sucks them in, kind of like Pokemon or something like that, gets them to come to our amazing Revolutionary War sites and tell them an engaging story that they can't say no to turning off and going to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or some other things that I don't even know what they are to entertain themselves. So I need to practice my sound bites up. We've got a very ambitious plan and we are determined to help as a practical matter, celebrate the accomplishments of South Carolina, tell the stories of the accomplishments of, of South Carolina, help preserve the sites, help dig out the obscure stories of what happened to everybody here. It's really easy to talk about William Moultrie and not too hard for me to talk about Francis Marion and Thomas Sumter, but how about everybody else that this war, this civil war in South Carolina impacted some good and some not so good. So that's our challenge. These commissioners have risen to the occasion. Thank you for the, for the challenge. I thought it was gonna be easy when I said yes, but I've, I've learned now. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna put South Carolina's rightful place. I do agree a little bit with uh, what uh, Jim was saying in jest that the Yankees stole the Revolutionary War stories from us. I can promise you that Lord Corn Cornwallis, when he showed up in Yorktown, Virginia, was not a wuss and didn't just quit because he wanted to have tea and crumpets. He was worn out. He was worn out by patriots in the Carolinas. He was worn out by good old Southern microbes. He was worn out by the lack of support that this world war had evolved into, say in England, you can no longer keep those folks as a colony. So thank you all for coming today. This is a dream come true for lots of people. Thank you, everybody here. Thank you to Vincent. Thank you to General Burns for suggesting the idea. Laurie has stood by us 18 years ago we were working on the Battle of Camden for the first time. Vincent was a young legislature. He invited me out to the battlefield ostensibly to show the head of the South Carolina Conservation Bank around. I watched Vincent put that guy in a full Nelson, <laughs> hold him down in the sand, till he said he would give us just a little piece of money to help save that battlefield. That's before it was popular. Thank you, Vincent. You were doing it before it became popular and you've stood by us the whole way. Thank you all so much for coming, and um, God bless America, God bless South Carolina. Now the staff advised me that I should recognize VIPs that have attended today. There's 150 <laughs> VIPs out here. 
Without you, this wouldn't happen. So I'm not even going to attempt to do it knowing that I would miss some people. I do want to thank the members of the General Assembly. I do want to join Charles in thanking Eric Emerson and Dwayne Parrish and their staffs, not just for what they're doing on this project, but what they do for South Carolina every single day. I do want to recognize the Wanamaker family and their wonderful stewardship of the Fort Mott site. And, and I'll tell you that um, I've been in a full Nelson wrestling match with them negotiating over Fort, Mottson, Fort Mott that we want to save it. And um, I'm determined that I'm not going to feed anybody named Wanamaker at this reception until they say yes. Also, you know, we have a lots of unsung heroes, George and Carol Summers from Manning, um, that do the Francis Marion Symposium every year in the last weekend of October. You will not find a finer program on the Revolutionary War to attend, and I commend that to your attention. We do have several members of the South Carolina Battleground Trust Board, Alan Roberson there in the back, um, Jim Holland up here front and David Ruer running around somewhere wherever David is. Um, thank you all so much for all that you all do. And lastly, let me thank Stephen Davis and his team at Davis and Floyd. They're working closely with us to design the conceptual master plans for these battlefield parks and we could not do that without them. So we're indebted to them and thank them for all their great work and delighted they're here to join us today. This is just the start, just the start of this wonderful adventure. And we're not going to stop until we're done. Thank you all, all very much for all the support you've given this project already and the support you will continue to do and the role that each and every one of you has played in this adventure. Now I'll turn it back over to General Burns as he will wind down the program. It is a day, great day in Kershaw County. We've heard the vision, we've heard about resources, you've met the leaders, and the leaders are out there. It's like a church, it's like a revival tent. Let all the people say, Amen. Amen. That was pretty weak. This is a Baptist here now. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And if David Ruhrer were here, we'd be going through several huzzas. <laughs> Try to contain yourself. I do need to thank one last group, and that's our fife and drum from Camden Military Academy and the Palmetto Fife and Drum.